Hey everyone, I hope that you're doing well and that your week is off to a good start. Um, also, I hope that you get a chance to be outside to enjoy this excellent weather that we're having. Um, it does make the pandemic a little more bearable, I think. Just a little bit, not that much. Um, <laughs> but anyway, I hope you're doing well. Um, I wanted to leave this message as we're starting the second week of Unit 5, uh, just to look at where we're headed this week. Um, also, I'll be posting Unit 6 soon. Um, I'll try to have that done sooner rather than later, but it will be there. Or it will be up uh, certainly by this weekend. Um, <clears throat> it shouldn't be quite as involved as Unit Five was um, in terms of, of uh, what I have to build to present to you. So hopefully it'll be sooner than later. Um, also thinking about where we're headed with Unit Five, um, I enjoyed reading your medium posts on. Um, how we should critically think about primary sources. Um, I also enjoyed your comments on uh, Trio's different characterizations of history, or his characterization, I should say, of different connotations of the word history. Um, history as the past as what happened versus history as what was said to have happened. Um, and it's maybe seemingly a small distinction, but it's a pretty important one when we think about the question of how we know what we know about the past and what our limits are on what we can know about the past. I think that's one of the maybe more difficult things to try to approach and uh, grapple with as a historian is this issue that uh, the historical record is always incomplete. Um, even you know, if we're studying something pretty recent, say the Watergate scandal of the early 70s, um, there are tons and tons of, of different sources on that event from all kinds of different places. Um, you know, so there are official government doc documents, there are proceedings from Congress, from various hearings, there are newspaper and TV reports, um, lots of things that have been recorded, have preserved. Meetings. Wow, thanks Siri. <laughs> Um, sorry about that. Um, I don't know why that happened. Um, but anyway, um, oh, my point being that even with something like, like Watergate, um, uh, even with 9-11, um, the record is always going to be incomplete. It's going to be fragmented and it's going to contain perspectives from lots of different angles. Um, so each person that left a record left uh, their own unique um, take on those events. We can't see the facts uh, just pared down um, in and of themselves. We can try to pull out you know, certain facts, like this happened on such and such date and time. Um, some of that kind of thing, you, know, you certainly can pull out of the documents. But the documents themselves are always going to contain a lot more, a lot more commentary, and they require that interpretation that we've been talking about. So this week, that's what we're going to be working on. Um, to that end, <coughs> excuse me. Um, to that end, um, I'm scheduling a couple of different Zoom meetings this week. One on Wednesday at one o'clock, another one on Friday at ten in the morning. Um, if those don't work for you, I'll record um, the conversations that we have and post them in the recorded Zoom meetings. Um, Please, if you can make it though, I would love to uh, have a chat with you about the documents that I've assigned you for this week. Um, you know, so I've given you a section of some documentation from a folder from the State Archives in Santa Fe about this question of um, whether or not the 24th Infantry should be allowed to remain in Columbus, New Mexico. Um, and so read the unit narrative to get a little bit of context on that event, or on the, the, those documents and the issues that they are relative to. Um, and then on those meeting days, um, you can show up and we can have a conversation about um, how you will approach the questions that are posed for you in the unit narrative. So the, the remaining assignment for this week is to write a medium post that addresses the four different questions um, so that you should have um, a reasonably um, um, kind of chunky paragraphs for uh, each of those responses to each of those questions um, in this medium post. Um, and again, as I've pointed out uh, elsewhere, if you would prefer to use images or video to uh, get your responses in and you can post those to medium, that is totally fine. Uh, it doesn't all have to be written. Um, 
All right, so that's where we're headed. Those are some opportunities you have. I'm also willing to chat with you about the documents via email, um, text message, whatever works best for you. One last thing I wanted to point out and uh, remind you of if you're able to attend uh, tomorrow, Tuesday, the 20th of October um, is our final Latin American Studies speaker event. Um, and let me hurry and look up uh, the time for that because I just realized that I have too many events coming up, as Siri just pointed out, and I can't remember um, whether or not it's at 2 o'clock or 3 o'clock. Um, well, my computer is being a little slow with that, so I will post the time uh, aside uh, from this video, you know, below or above this video, so that you'll have that information and you'll be able to register. I hope to see many of you there. I hope to see many of you at the conversation groups, either on Wednesday or Friday this week, and I hope you're having a good Monday.